real spiritual analogy. Um, um, so many of us uh, here attending the conference in person um, may, may have traveled from elsewhere. And uh, yesterday we had the awesome walking tour and you may still want to explore Seattle a bit more. Um, so what we're going to do here uh, would depend on the weather. So, um, and Balkan and data is just like um, when you average some values over a, a vast, um, a vast um, geographical area like a state. And here's the, here we see that um, on, on average, uh, Washington, the Washington state tends to be less sunny than California. Well, it's still sunny today, but that's an average. <laughs> So, so you get a gist of um, Balkarni Seek. Um, so, um, yeah, you, you um, but here as a tourist, you will, you will prepare for the weather in the individual city. And um, you also want to visit like individual places in the city. So you want a higher resolution. Um, and uh, so single cell RNA seek data is just like a list of tourist attractions that may be of interest, but, uh, but uh, each tourist attraction is dissociated from space. Um, and here it's like, um, say a building will be analogous to a cell and it does give a lot of interesting information about the uh, which places are interesting in seattle um yeah for a walking tour we went to some of those and um and you can even just like in singles that are in seek um cluster those different places um based on their characteristics like uh, these are uh, skyscrapers and uh, uh, these are museums and uh, so on so now you get to see like a, what is of interest there, and then you will wonder how 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 do you get there? Then you will look at a map, um, which um, I would say it's uh, maybe analogous to spatial transcriptomics data. And so here in this map, you see like different places of interest uh, labeled on the map, and you know where they are, and you also get um, annotations of uh, different spatial regions on this map. Um, like, uh, here in neighborhoods with different characteristics and different functions. Um, and uh, so if you went to the walking tour and if, if you like um, zoom in onto the map um, and really study it, you may find out like different types of places tend to cluster in space, uh, such as the, the skyscrapers in downtown and also like um, um, several museums around Space Needle. And you may ask why such clustering and, um, and then this may inspire interest to um, to look into the historical um, the historical forces behind these, um, uh, such as the 1962 World Fair that gave rise to Space Needle and the Seattle Center around here, um, and uh, so so in this way, um, spatial information may may um, may lead you to uh, further investigations that uh, that will not be available in non spatial single cell data. Um, It's not responding. Um, so uh, back to spatial transcriptomics. Uh, spatial transcriptomics tran transcriptomics technologies will help us to make that kind of map uh, in histological space. Um, so um, in this this plot shows the number of new publications uh, for spatial transcriptomics over time, and uh, we see that for uh, both data collection in the blue curve and data analysis in the red curve, uh, we see like a sharp increase in uh, in the interest uh, in the number of new publications since 2018. Um, and uh, what are the what are the leading um, spatial transcriptomics technologies? And uh, so uh, here, uh, so this plot shows the number of institutions using each technology that I know of, and the uh, uh, Visium uh, from 10x genomics is by far most popular. It's used by over 100 different institutions around the world, and then if it's followed by GeoMX, GeoMX DSP, and here's the GeoMX whole transcriptomic analysis, and uh, from Nanostream here, um, and um, yeah, and then the, we also have like some other uh, single molecular fish-based method and the in-situ sequencing, um, but uh, and these technologies can be classified based on how the spatial information is uh, conserved. But uh, for for the purpose of this workshop, it's good enough to know that uh, like uh, these uh, methods, like Visium and GeoMX DS, uh, DSP, would aggregate the transcripts over um, areas um, in, in the tissue, and it, uh, they don't they generate they don't have single cell resolution while. Uh, while the SMFish and the in situ sequencing based methods, they uh, they will visualize the transcripts as a discrete puncta and then count them, and these have single mole molecular and the single cell resolution. 
Um, yeah, here just uh, may if you don't already know, um, yeah, here's a quick intro to how those um, m the most popular popular technologies work. So, um, yeah, in Visium, uh, it's basically you have a glass slide and you have um, uh, and you print the microarray um, on onto the slide in a regular hexa hexagonal grid, um, and then uh, each spot uh, would. Uh, each spot printed on this uh, microarray will have a, a spatial barcode um, whose locations are already known, and it also has a transcript capture sequence. And um, you mount the tissue on onto the slide, onto the capture uh, capture region. Then those uh, spots will capture the transcripts in in situ. Um, for uh, GeoMX DSP, it's um, basically you have uh, you have probes targeting um, targeting each gene and um, and, and then on each probe, there's a UV cleavable, cleavable tag. And then, um, so when you select the regions of interest or ROIs, um, the uh, the UV cleav cleavable tags only within those regions will be released, and those can be quantified to in order to quantify uh, gene expression if, um, within that within that area. Um, so for uh, for uh, SM fish based methods, and in this example, it's uh, seek fish. It's um, here um, each um, so each spot here is a individual transcript uh, mRNA molecule, and uh, so um, the, these are, are counted. And in order to quantify more genes than there are uh, easily discernible colors, uh, you uh, you perform multiple rounds of hybridization. Um, and and here, uh, this kind of data is uh, usually also accompanied by a DAPI staining for nuclei, and uh, often um, like a some other kind of staining for the cytoplasm for whole cell segmentation. Um, so as for the analysis, um, it can be um, broadly divided into two types: the up upstream and downstream. Um, in upstream data analysis. Um, uh, Upstream data analysis would uh, would convert raw data into a more usable form, such as uh, FASTQ files uh, to gene count matrix, uh, which can then be used in downstream analyses uh, for biological inferences, uh, such as uh, finding spatially variable genes and spatial regions, which have been discussed in some earlier talks today. And so, for uh, here, for um, the packages dem demonstrated um, here in this workshop, a spatial feature experiment as a way to organize data, it's uh, it will be more like Upstream, while Voyager, which is uh, used for exploratory spatial analysis uh, based on the SFE structure, it's uh, kind of more downstream. Um, um, the, the spatial information in from spatial transcriptomics will uh, give us uh, many opportunities not not available in non-spatial single cell RNA seq. Um, however, those opportunities are not always utilized. Uh, so, for for example, um, most of the cell type deconvolution methods uh, for uh, used for Visium data, um, they they do not take the spatial autocorrelation of uh, cell type distribution into account. Uh, and sometimes, like um, the methods used for uh, originally used for ball currency are are used on Visium, like uh, CyberSort. Um, yeah. So among among the opportunities are uh, yeah we can use gene expression to find spatial regions uh, such as, and there are already many packages doing that like a uh, base space and uh, Giotto. Uh, um, but in this workshop, we'll um, explore a little bit in how cell and tissue morphology from the H and E image um, can yeah um, ca can relate to like um, gene expression and um, also. Um, also, like, we'll explore the spatial characteristics of gene expression, like the strength and length scale of uh, spatial autocorrelation. Um, um, oh, uh, here it comes. Um, so geospatial data analysis methods can help us to uh, utilize the uh, spatial information uh, to, to utilize the opportunities uh, uh, mentioned before. And um, broadly, uh, geospatial data can be uh, classified as a vector or raster. Uh, a vector data would represent the world in um, coordinates, like um, the coordinates of points, lines, and the coordinates of uh, vertices in polygons. Whereas raster is kind of like an image. Uh, it has pixels, and each pixel has, um, has a value. Um, so, um, and a vector would get 
also has um, different types here, and these are explained in the website of this workshop. And I might not have enough time to explain all of those, but uh, here um, for, uh, for, for the packages in this workshop, uh, we will focus on aerial data where um, aerial vector data, where the data is aggregated over um, areas in space. Um, and this, this type of is common in epidemiology, uh, such as to protect the privacy of the patients. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, and shown this map, it's like a um, seven day rolling average of COVID cases in around Seattle uh, as of July the 12th. And, um, and then here we see that for uh, say Visium and for GLMXDSP, they, they also aggregate um, data uh, on area um, and um, and the existing well-established um, data analysis tools for these will include S the SF package and the SPDEP package. Um, and these are uh, used extensively in both uh, SFE and Voyager. Um, so no analogy is perfect. Um, and uh, uh, these are some of the limitations of this uh, geospatial analogy. So for instance, um, uh, biological tissues are usually uh, originally 3D, but spatial, in spatial transcriptomics, we usually collect the data only from a thin, thin section of that originally uh, three-dimensional tissue. And uh, and there may be implications from this uh, procedure, while uh, whereas um, geospatial data analysis methods and the resources are very focused on 2D. Um, also, um, spatial trans transcriptomics data can have like much higher dimensions, like uh, we, we have 20,000 genes and um, it can also get larger, like in some MRFish data, some MRFish data sets, um, you get into like millions of cells. And, but for me, well, like um, you uh, just imagine like how many cities there are in California that get even close to that. Um, yeah, because of the size, like um, we may need to make the methods more scalable um, and maybe we, we need to do on disk um, computation and, um, yeah, also, um, um, also very different historical forces operate um, in the ge geographical space and in the histological space. So, uh, for example, um, unlike cities and landscapes, uh, the uh, development and structure of some tissues are tightly regulated, uh, such as the cerebral cortex. Um, All right, so um, that's for the intro, and uh, now let's head over to our studio. Um, yeah, this is on orchestra. Um, so um, yeah, let's begin with uh, spatial feature experiment class. Um, at the heart of spatial feature experiment, or SFE, is uh, simple features, uh, which is a standardized way to represent uh, geometries in space. Hold on, why is this not running? Oh. Um. Yes, it's on orchestra, so. All right, so. He yes, here we go. So at, at the heart of um, SFE is the um, is simple features. It's a standard. It's a standardized way to represent geometries in space. Um, and in R, um, we uh, R would give access to simple features with the SF package, um, uh, which, which is based on the um, SF data frame. And mostly, it behaves like a normal data frame, um, except that it has a special column for um, for the geometries. Um, so this is the uh, this is a schematic of the um, of the um, SFE. Um, yeah, this is a schematic of the SFE class. Um, so um, if you have worked with a single cell experiment or a spatial experiment, then the um, then this gray box in the middle will be familiar. Uh, so, so here we have uh, we put the gene count matrix uh, and like log normalized counts and so on in um, in assays, and you have the cells or visible spots in the columns and the genes or features in the rows. Um, and then we we also have the data for the um, for like the cells or spots and for genes and for a single cell experiment experiment we uh, will put uh, reduced dimensions like uh, projections of the cells in PCA or TISNI or UMAP reduced dims and 
for spatial experiment, we uh, also have uh, spatial cores for the coordinates of the cells or spots and the uh, source like uh, image data it's for an HNE image that can be plotted uh, behind the spots in data visualization. Um, here for spatial feature experiment, extending spatial experiment, um, so, so we have added um, the geometries, uh, which these are um, Ceph data frames um, that can be associated with the cells or uh, spots in the columns and associated with the genes um, or features in the rows. And um, so examples of the column geometries would be uh, Vizim spot polygons or, uh, or for like a SM fish um, based technologies, um, the nuclei and cell segmentation polygons. Um, um, we also have uh, spatial neighborhood graphs um, associated with the columns and the rows of the gene count matrix. And uh, so here it's uh, implemented as, uh, here it's stored as the list W object um, as an SP deb. And I know there is, um, there's like a, uh, within the SCE object, we have the call pairs and row pairs kind of thing, but I'm not using that because uh, list W objects are used in um, SPDEP uh, spatial reg and the AD, spe AD spatial packages uh, for spatial dependency analysis. And uh, by using list W here, I, um, uh, we can avoid converting the objects every single time we do analysis. Um, in, in addition to the uh, row and column uh, geometries and graphs, uh, we uh, there's uh, another aspect called the um, annotation geometries and annotation graphs. Um, or shorthand like and or geometries. Uh, so basically here, uh, here are geometries that are associated with the data set, but, uh, but do not correspond to the, the dimensions of the gene count matrix. Uh, so for example, uh, here, um, as an example data um, used in the tutorial, there, there will be myofiber segmentations. Um, uh, also we can have a pathologist um, annotate the histological regions and tissue boundaries, and these can go into a um, annotation geometries. and. Uh, and then uh, in analog graphs, we can have spatial neighborhood graphs for, for these things. Yeah, so, so the text would just explain what those fields are. And now we load these um, packages. Yeah, the example data is from the SFE data package. Um, how do we construct an SFE object? Uh, so we can do that from scratch, uh, say from a sparse matrix here and uh, call the constructor, which uh, uh, which behaves very similarly to the constructor of um, SCE and SPE, uh, like, uh, I mean, spatial experiment or SPE. Um, so as for the geometries, um, here we, we already have the spatial coordinates specified and um, Spot diameter arguments, uh, it's um, sort of like just for Visium. So one, uh, because the spot diameters are known and um, and by specifying that you can convert the, uh, the spot centroids into polygons. Um, and then here, um, so geometries can be either uh, specified within the constructor like uh, shown here, um, or, or they can be added later. Um, with, with the setter functions uh, shown in the next section. So uh, given the popularity of uh, Visium data, um, so uh, SFE can also directly read in a uh, space range output for, for Visium, uh, such as here. Um, it's, uh, it's like a toy example within the spatial experiment package. And uh, you see the, so, so, that's the con uh, so that's like the structure and content of the um, space range output directory. Um, yeah, and here we use the uh, retinx visim sfe uh, function. Uh, it's so basically it behaves very similarly to the um, retinx visim function in spatial experiment. Um, but uh, but it reads uh, so after it reads in the data, it will um, it will give you the spot polygons. Um, and if you read in um, if you read uh, the filter data instead of raw data, you can uh, it also construct spatial neighborhood graphs. Uh, yeah, it constructs a spatial neighborhood graph for the um, for spots that are on tissue, and uh, so here it what what it looks like when the SFE objects printed. So um, yeah, you get all the info from uh, from SPE, and in addition, it um, it prints the which geometries you have and which type of um, each geometry um, besides the name. Yes.
yeah, it, it is needed. It's um, it's here on this website. Uh, it should be you should be able to access that from the um, from the schedule. Um, yeah, I think it, the, from the workshops tab in the. But I'm just uh, I just want to run the code here in our studio. Yeah, and then if you already have an um, SPE object, um, then um, yeah, here's just that toy example, and uh, you can convert that into into an SFE object. But the caveat is that um, duplicate duplicate columns are not allowed. Um, yeah, here. Um, so this uh, here we'll use a small subset of a real data set um, to demonstrate how you interact with the. Um, with the object and how you get and set different fields. Um, so for, for geometries, um, it's pretty straightforward. Like for, for geometries associated with the column, column of the gene count matrix, use the call geometry function. And for, uh, yeah, for, for geometries associated with the rows of gene count matrix, you use a row geometry. And for the annotations like uh, tissue boundaries, you use annot geometry. And so here you specify the SFE object and you put the name here, uh, name of the geometry. So. This is de deliberately made similar to reduced dims in in SEE. Uh, yeah, so here we use the getter to. Um, why is it doing that again? Um, oh, I see. So. Um, Yeah, I need to download that data set. Um, yeah, here we go. Yeah, here we use the, the call geometry getter to get the Visium spot polygons. And uh, this is what it looks like when the SF data frame is printed. Um, and uh, this is what it looks like in space. Um, yeah, you can also use the uh, same, uh, same like uh, function arguments. Uh, it has a setter. Um, in case you don't already know these names, then you can use the call geometry names uh, to uh, to curate the names of the um, geometries. And uh, so, for for certain geometries that may be more commonly used, such as uh, Visim spot polygons and like tissue boundaries or hand, so you don't have to curate and type in the names over and over again. Like uh, for Visim for Visim polygon, like you can use like spot poly getter and setter and uh, so for tissue boundary, there is like a tissue boundary function with a getter and setter, and uh, this is what uh, this is what the tissue boundary looks like for this toy example. Um, yeah, and, uh, and there is a setter. Um, so for for spatial neighbor uh, for spatial neighborhood graphs, the getter and setter user interface are um, are very similar to those for um, for the geometries and. Uh, so, but, but first we need to uh, we need to find a, a spatial neighborhood graph, and uh, so here we uh, the SFE package wraps all the methods for spatial neighborhood graphs implement implemented in the spdep package, um, and here we use uh, in the exa this example we use uh, triangulation, but other methods uh, include uh, k nearest neighbors like distance based ne uh, neighbors uh, like polygon contigu contiguity, and there's also like a relative neighbors and a sphere of influence and Gabriel neighbors. Um, and this is what the uh, triangulated graph looks like. And we know that like uh, for, uh, for this uh, hexagonal Visium grid, like these edges are not supposed to be there. Uh, for Visium, uh, it's actually more straightforward to find, to find a graph based on the grid. Uh, so, so we can use the find Visium graph function to, um, and here we use the call graph um, setter. It also has a getter. So yeah, just like in geometry, row geometry, um, and the geometry, so we have call graph, row graph, and the anal graph here. Um, yeah, the, the arguments are all the same. Um, and this is what the uh, what the Visium spatial neighborhood graph looks like, and this is the correct uh, graph. Um, so um, yeah, again, you can um, hear it, the, the getter takes an SFE object in the name of the graph, and in case you don't already know a name, you can, uh, you can use call graph names to cure the names. So, um, and so far in uh, in that example, uh, there, there's only one sample in the data set. Um, but uh, so in spatial experiment, 
uh, object, there is a special field called sample ID. And this is very important because uh, while you may want to put um, the data from multiple tissue sections into the same SPE object uh, for, for non-spatial analyses such as uh, clustering, differential expression, dimension reduction, and so on, but, uh, but, but the spatial coordinate values of, the, um, of each spot in those different tissue sections can overlap. Um, so, so it's very important to keep those uh, different sections or samples separate. Um, and this is actually even more important for SFE because spatial dependence, the spatial neighborhood graph would only make sense um, within the same piece of tissue. Um, so here, um, we'll, uh, here I uh, will uh, use this toy example. Um, yeah, just, just to make an SFE object with, uh, with two samples. Um, to um, actually, it's um, not complicated. Uh, so for the getters and setters for geometries and graphs uh, shown above, um, uh, there's a sample ID argument, uh, which is optional when there's only one sample in, in, in the object, but, but it's mandatory when there are multiple samples. And you, you can actually also put all to get all samples. Yeah, or, or, or you, can, you can also like change sample IDs with uh, this function and um, so uh, these are uh, so that that's for um, object interaction and for um, operations. Uh, so yeah, we have already done this. Uh, you see, there's a C-bind method to concatenate to SFE objects, and you can also subset in um, the SFE object like a matrix. Um, but but here's a catch. Um, so if you subset the columns, then the um, then the um, the node indices in the spatial graphs would no longer be valid, and so there's a drop function to determine what to do with those graphs. And uh, so if drop equals true, then um, when you remove the columns, then you will get a message um, telling you that like the those indices are no no longer valid, and you, um, and dropping all the all the graphs. And um, but then, uh, um, if it's false, by uh, which is the default, then um, it will SFE will try to reconstruct those spatial graphs based on the method, based on the information recorded when you were constructing it. Um, and then, but however, if the con reconstruction fails, uh, say if there's an error, then uh, you get a warning. Then the um, and then the graphs that failed to reconstruct are are dropped. Um, uh, because we have a uh, spatial information, we can also perform um, geometric operations on the on the SFE object. Um, so, um, so here we're plotting the uh, visim spot polygons in front of the tissue boundary polygon, and and we want to subset this SF SFE object so we only keep the spots that are on tissue. Um, so uh, there's the crop function. Uh, so so you can use a geometry to subset a SFE object. Um, so um, so here we use the tissue boundary of this um, data set. Um, so not only is the gene count matrix subset, so only spots on tissue that intersect tissue are are kept then, but also the um, geometries themselves are also subsetted. So only the interse intersections are are kept here. Um, uh, in addition, you can uh, you can also like just do like more conventional kind of cropping with the bounding box. Um, um, so uh, you can you can also perform geometric operations on SFE without actually subsetting the um, the uh, the object. So for for instance, you can use endopred to to get a logical vector uh, indicating whether say like each visible spot intersects the tissue. And um, actually, for these operations, uh, even though the default predicate is intersection, but uh, any predicate implement in the SF package are supported. So uh, for instance, you can you can also use say um disjoint or like cover or covered by and so on. Um, yeah, and here with and pred you can um, say get a number of nuclei that intersect uh, that intersect per, uh, each um, visible spot and um, and here and that actually performs the operation. Uh, so you, you can get a new SF data frame to uh, for the uh, to get a geometries of intersections between each visible spot and the myofibers. Yeah, and finally, um, yeah, just like for the SF object, we can get the coordinates of the bounding box of an SFE object that, that will consider all the geometries present in this object. And so sometimes you may want to move the coordinates so like so they're close, close to the origin and you can um, do that with a uh, remove empty space. Um, 
Uh, there are some limitations with SFE so far, but the one that I want to emphasize here is that the, um, in, at least in the first version, uh, SFE does not touch the um, image data field in the SPE package. So if you perform ge geometric operations, then it will not change the image. Uh, all right, so here we get have some ideas about the uh, SFE object, and then we can, uh, uh, so, so we can go ahead and um, perform some um, analysis based on um, SFE. Um, so basically, it, so if you have worked with a single cell RNA seq data, then um, so say for um, single cell experiment or SCE, uh, you have uh, you have packages like Scatter, Scran, uh, Scuttle, like those that can perform some basic analyses and, um, and uh, QC and um, and visualization. And for Surat, uh, Surat object, Surat not only implement an object but also some basic analyses and visualization methods. And so here for Voyager package, uh, we. Uh, we aim that a Voyager to SFE is just like um, scatter scran and those to SCE. Um, even though it's still like a kind of early in development. Um, uh, Tabula's first law of geography says everything's re related to everything else, but near things are more re related than distant things. So that's basically the gist of spatial outlook correlation and uh, um, much of um, explorer spatial data analysis or ESDA uh, would focus on spatial outlook correlation because uh, in many uh, say like regression methods, the samples are assumed to be independent, but that's not the case because of uh, spatial outlook correlation. Um, yeah, and then here um, again, we use um, the SF and SP depth packages um, to, to explore like a spatial outlook correlation here. And yeah, we'll load the packages. Uh, so uh, this data that comes from, uh, it's already published and comes from mouse skeletal muscles. And um, uh, this particular one used here, it was collected two days after no taxon injury. Uh, and uh, this is the um, H &E, H e image of the uh, of this data set. Um, yeah, and here we see the pink part, those are myofibers, and this is the injury site with a lot of leukocyte infiltration. And this uh, this thing is the muscle tendon junction. Um, so uh, some QC metrics have already been pre-computed here, such as uh, the total UMI counts and counts a uh, number of genes detected per spots and genes or like a proportion of mitochondrial counts per, uh, prop my, my, um, uh, as well as like a logical vector indicating whether each victim spot intersects the tissue. Um, Yeah, and here um, we will only work on uh, we'll only work on the spots that that are on uh, that intersect the tissue, and uh, we nor we use the scram package to normalize the, the data. And um, so, among the annotation geometries, we have tissue boundary, uh, myofiber segmentation, and nuclei segmentation. Um, okay. Yeah. So um, maybe yeah. So here with. Uh, here with uh, geometric operations, we can relate the myofibers to, to nuclei. And uh, yeah, we can relate myofibers to the visiting spots. Uh, so um, plus spatial, the plus spatial feature functions, the go-to function to plot like a uh, gene expression and call data, new, uh, call data columns in space. Uh, uh, but in addition, it can, it can plot like um, annotation geometries and their attributes uh, alongside like a uh, Alongside, like, say, like gene expression or call data, and here in the backgrounds, um, the myofiber polygons and color by their areas, and um, yeah, and here we um, here we see like how many myofibers intersect each visiting spot, and um, yeah, that can be shown in space. Like uh, these, these region will have um, larger number of um, myofibers per spot, and. Uh, there's no one-to-one -one mapping between uh, visiting spots and the myofibers, and so if we want to relate attributes of the myofibers to gene expression in visiting spots, then we may need to summarize those attributes. Uh, so, for instance, here we will uh, will average the area of each uh, myofiber intersect intersecting each um, visiting spot, um, and uh, that can be plotted in space. So, so we see that uh, this region will have tend to have like larger myofibers, and those. Uh, gray spots are uh, those that do not intersect any myofiber. Um, uh, yeah, here here it comes to gene expression. Uh, so these are marker genes for uh, for different types of myofibers, and uh, so um, 
here we will try to plot like a different assays. Uh, we'll plot the raw count and the uh, lock normalized counts side by side in space. And um, yeah, so this is a fast twitch muscle. So we don't expect to see many uh, slow twitch type one myofibers. Indeed, there aren't that many. And uh, this is uh, this is for um, type two my uh, type two A myofibers. And so for for those interested, uh, this in orchestra you can change the code to plot like type two B or type two X. Um, um, also, like um, because the SFE object um, in inherits from SDE, um, so other non-spatial EDA plots from scatter can still be used. Uh, so, for instance, here we plot the uh, here the mean myofiber area per spot, and uh, here's the proportion of mitochondrial count, and we see that uh, the the spots expressed in the marker for uh, type two A fibers tend to have smaller area and larger proportion of mitochondria, and um, yeah, then for then we'll proceed to um, spatial auto correlation analysis like uh, Morin's I Gary C, and um, that will require spatial neighborhood graphs. And uh, here, um, yeah, so so here it's the Visim graph, um, and uh, that's what it looks like. Um, yeah, and here for uh, for myofiber, it's the um, it, it, it's polygon contiguity, so there's only an edge if the if two myofibers touch. Um, yeah, then, uh, so in the first version of Voyager, uh, we only support um, univariate global spatial allo correlation uh, methods. Uh, so uh, univariates uh, just say one gene at a time, and global means uh, you get one value for, for, for entire, for entire uh, data, data set. Um, and, and to demonstrate um, the analysis on gene expression, we just use a small number of top um, highly variable genes. So, uh, Morin's I is the most commonly used uh, spatial allo correlation uh, metric, and so so here in the form, uh, in the mathematical form, it kind of looks like a Pearson correlation between the value at each uh, at each spot and uh, and their neighbors um, on the spatial neighborhood graph, and also like just like um, Pearson correlation, it takes the value between negative one and one. So for positive spatial allo correlation, uh, it's like nearby spots are more similar than it's uh, above zero and. Yeah, it's positive. And then for negative spatial allo correlation, it's kind of like a checkered pattern. It's um, more I will be negative. So uh, this can be computed for directed for matrices um, or for a numeric column in uh, in call data or row data. Um, it can also be done for uh, for attributes in analog geometry and call geometry. Um, so so the results are uh, so for for call. For call data, the results are stored in the field called call feature data, and for um, for the geometries, it's uh, stored in an attribute of those um, geometries, like it's call feature data. And so for gene expression, um, the the results are stored in row data. Um, and um, if you want a computer for like a large number of genes, you um, this uh, we use uh, BIOS D parallel um, for for parallel programming. Um, GRC is like an another spatial allo correlation method, and um, so, so basically, you just change the uh, function name, like Morin's I, you change into Gary C, and then the arguments are the same. Um, so, um, actually, for all the other univariate global methods, um, the arguments are the same, and you just change the function name. Um, well, except when the spe specific uh, method will require additional arguments, um, and then here we, yeah, you can you can perform permutation testing to see if um, to to see if the more I is significant and uh, um, can be plotted. Um, so these are the simulation. Uh, these are like the, the permuted values, and then uh, here and the, these are the the these are like the actual values, and it's very significant for encounters and genes. And um, with cor correlogram, we can see the length scales of um, of spatial allo correlation. It can be done for Morin's I and the uh, Gary C. Um, here we just do two genes and um, can be plotted here. And uh, uh, yeah, not only shows the length scale of the decay, but also sometimes you may see um, second order neighbors uh, have like higher higher values in the first order because there, there's some like negative spatial allo correlation in some regions of the tissue. Um, and then finally, we have the um, there's um, more in scatter plot. Um, so in the x-axis, it's the value at each visible spot, um, and in the y-axis is the average of uh, the average value of the the neighbors of uh, of this. And 
Um, and there's actually proof from 1995 that shows that the slope of the line fitted to this plot oh, yeah. is more in its eye. Um, and sometimes we see... Um, what? Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so sometimes we see clusters in these um, in this kind of plot, and sometimes it's actually more interesting than this. Um, yeah, then we can define the clusters and um, yeah, it uses the bluster package on Bioconductor and you can plot on like the more and scatter plot and as well as in space to sort of, sort of like a see, uh, sort of like see different spatial regions because of like kind of different kinds of neighbors in terms of value. So um, yeah, so so that's the, um, that that's the, the existing functionalities of Voyager. And uh, so uh, there are some limitations like, um, because yeah, I just mentioned that a spatial spatial transcriptomics data can have very high dimensions, and it's, uh, all the more important to uh, to support multivariate spatial analyses. Uh, and we do plan to do that in future versions. And like uh, we can support a geographically weighted PCA, and also like a spatially, uh, yeah, yeah, also like um, multi static PCA uh, as implementing like a ADE spatial. And uh, also the for now the plotting functions don't plot the HNE image in the background. And uh, because uh, yeah, Geom SF, it might be more tricky to implement. And it's also makes it also more tricky to flip it while axes. And uh, yeah, finally only two dimensional data are present. So uh, our, our support. So, all right. So yeah, then acknowledgement. So thank you for, uh, thank you for coming um, and uh, I will, Thank everyone in our lab, and especially your Laura, Telling, Christian, and Stina uh, for for feedback on this project and the presentation. And also thank Dario Rigelli, the the author of Spatial Experiment, for some discussions. Or uh, thank you. Que uh, now I can take questions. Okay, we are supposed to end, but we actually have a half an hour break for our next one, so we can take a few questions. Let me hear. Uh, that was really great. Thanks. Um, can I just ask right at the end there, you, you were saying clustering on like regions of Moran's eye score for a neighborhood analysis. Did I in interpret that correctly? Um, not really. Okay. Yeah, I was kind of in a rush. Okay. So it's a, it's a Moran scatter plot. But then after that, your uh, it's the same cluster. It's cluster on, uh, those are clusters on this plot. So it just kind of shows like uh, the different kinds of like neighborhoods. It's kind of like a second order thing. Yeah, right. That's a really cool idea. All right, yeah. thank you. But but the problem is like you can only do this for like one gene at a time. So it's nobody wants to do, do that for like twenty thousand genes. So that's like a critical limitation so far. See the ones from online. Okay, so from um, Niels Ealing, are call graphs subsettable similar to call pairs, meaning that they are being reconstructed upon subsetting? Yes, uh, so um, when they're reconstructed, they, they are, uh, they're reconstructed using the, like the subset um, of the columns, so um, yes. Okay, and another one from uh, Ryan Thompson. So are these polygons actually uh, polygonal approximations of circles? Um, for Visium, yes. Um, actually, you can you can look at the documentation of ST buffer function in um, in the SF package to uh, to see the um, parameters in doing so. Like how many edges do you use to to approximate? Um, another one from Prathipa. Can we use Moran's eye or other statistics if there is spatial trend, non-stationary, and and I saw and isotropy seems differential spatial. Seems differential spatial and different in different dependency. Um. Well, like Moran's eye, that will only be a beginning. So any isotropy, it, it really is a problem here. And uh, we plan to add like a, like a say, uh, like a cobaragram map, like in different direction to to visualize any isotropy. And um. Yes, but so far, like um, Moran's eye, it's, it only it just considers the neighbors on the spatial neighbor graph in all directions, so it does not take into account uh, any isotropy. And um, yeah, at present, uh, yeah, we also well maybe you can spot like a spatial trend when you're plotting certain values in space, but uh, but in the first version of Voyager, like it does not really like formally 
that you've like explored that. But but I think uh, in the future, I uh, I also plan to uh, like um, put some functionalities of spatial reg um, package here, and that uh, in the future version it might be supported. Another one uh, from May Woods. Great workshop, thanks. Uh, one of the limitations listed is the 2D geometry. Do you think the geometry could be extended to 3D to analyze multiple vertical tissue slices? Um, ideally, yes, but I think uh, um, it's actually more complicated. Well, actually, like SF simple features, it does support uh, 3D data, but um, but here the um, I think the complication actually comes from the resolution, uh, the stress resolution, in different directions. That for for usually the x and y resolution, uh, x and y have much higher resolution than z, and so I I'm still not sure of how if the z dimension should be treated differently or um, so. Um, so I think short answer is technically yes, but long answer is it's a bit more complicated. Any other questions from the room? Somewhere online. Thank you. Thanks, Lambda, for the great uh, worship. Um, so, are the spots the actual um, size? Because I know that was one of the parameters when you uh, for your yeah. constructor function. Uh, because later on, I saw that you have this function for counting the number of nuclei based on the segmentation mass you had. So. Yeah, it is. Uh, so in space ranger output, you have like a scale factor JSON file, and that will so that file has like a field like a, which is basically the spot diameter in the in pixels in the um, full resolution image, and that's what I used here. And um, but you know, like the exact exact location of the edges of the spot might depend miles depend on how you align the tissue on the slide. So it's. Actually, I'm not like 100% sure like if, how accurate that is, but, but at least like um, qualitatively speaking, I think it, it gives you some information. So like the 0 0.7 parameter value you have. No, was... that one. That's just a toy example. So that that's not from that's not like meaningful or anything. It's just used for demonstration. Well, because I feel like some of your later plots in Voyager. Um, where you mentioned like one of the limitations is that you cannot show the H and E staining. Yeah. You were actually just plotting the spots with like some yeah. continuous metrics. So you could have used other functions for that right now, or am I missing an extra layer that um, well, that um, you have um, right now that the other functions don't well, so, for, uh, for that particular graph? For for instance, um, actually the implementation that this plus special feature function, it, it actually, it's quite complicated because number one, I have to deal with, uh, I have to deal with the um, sample ID. So a sample ID can can be plot, plotting like different facets. And um, number two, like uh, how do I plot, um, how do I plot state gene expression on visiting spots alongside like an annotation geometry? And uh, also like when you, when you want to color by like a both gene expression and like an attribute of annotation geometry, then like a, I'll have to use like the GG new scale package to plot in different colors so you can tell them apart. And uh, also I think another one is the palette. Um, so for, uh, just now, uh, that's uh, so. These are the default palettes for the um, continuous, continuous variables. Just um, anyway, um, so so the gene expression is shown blue and the annotations are shown red. And so that that's the default I shown here. Just let me know if you don't like it. But for categorical variables, the default palettes uh, the default palettes from Diddle Seek. So to make sure that it's colorblind friendly. Yeah, no, they're they're awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, so, like, um, the part about the neighbors, I feel like um, that could be really useful for QC, because sometimes yeah. you can find, like, a spot that feels like QC metric, and so now, I don't know if there's a, a easy function to say, like, give me all the neighbors to the spots that fail, like, something, um, Yeah. right? Um so far, well, yeah, you have to like directly interact with the list w object, and it's a, it's basically within list w object. Like to get into some technical details, there's a, so it, it has a, it's an S three object and has a field called neighbors and a British spelling with the U, and you get that. It's a list of like a, uh, like a who are the neighbors of each spot, and then from that you can you can query like a who are the neighbors of the like outlier spot. But but so far there isn't like a easy function to do uh, 
so maybe uh so thank you for feedback i might implement that yeah because i know like this is one of the you don't want to compute a distance matrix that's like your memory can blow up quite easily when you have a lot of samples right um i know this happens with base space mm -hmm. um I mean, yeah, we can talk more about. Yeah, yeah. So like, I, I so far I don't really have. Uh, I, I don't know like what really is the best practice for the spatial neighborhood graph. So um, uh, yeah, just uh, make it possible to do do it like a bunch of different methods with SPDEP. But but I cannot tell you like which one's the best. All right. Well, join me in thanking Lambda again for a wonderful talk. Thank you demo of her package. And I guess we, we have a little bit extra time. The next workshop sets will start at 3.30.